Hi, in this video we are going to see about the anti-clotting mechanisms that are present inside our body. So this is usually asked as a short essay question and the questions are usually like uh, write a short essay on fibrinolytic system, explain why bl blood does not clot uh, normally inside the body and the mechanism of action of anticoagulants such as heparin. Okay, so we will see the different anti-clotting mechanisms. So when such a question is asked, we should know a basic idea of how blood does not clot inside our normal body. Okay, because we've got mechanisms that prevent clotting inside the blood vessels and also to break down any clots that do form. Okay, so the first of all, the body prevents clotting inside the blood vessels and even if the clot forms, they are broken down. Okay, so we'll see what are the factors that prevent clotting inside the blood vessel. First one is factors that prevent platelet aggregation. Second, factors preventing coagulation. And third, it includes the role of the endothelium. We'll see the factors preventing platelet aggregation. So an important factor that prevents platelet aggregation is prostacycline. Okay, so we know that in our, uh, in our the initial temporary hemostasis, we've got this platelet plug formation, right? And an integral step of this plated plug formation is plated aggregation. Okay, so this is plated aggregation is due to the release of thromboxane as well as ADP by the platelets. And what does prostacycline do? It inhibits this thromboxane so that plated aggregation will be inhibited. Okay, so an important factor that prevents plated aggregation is prostacycline. Next, we'll see what are the factors that prevent coagulation. So we have got many natural anticoagulants that are circulating in the blood, which includes heparin, antithrombin 3, as well as protein C. So we'll see the mechanism of action of each. Heparin is uh, secreted by the basophils as well as the mast cells. Okay, so they are secreted naturally by the basophils and the mast cells. And the mechanism of action is, see, we know that in our uh, uh, clotting mechanism, prothrombin is to be converted to thrombin. Okay, now this conversion is inhibited by the heparin. So prothrombin will not be converted to thrombin. Not only that, we know thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin. Well, heparin will uh, inact to inhibit that also. It will fail to convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Okay, and moreover, it facilitates the action of antithrombin 3. So this is how heparin will act as an anticoagulant. It will prevent conversion of prothrombin to thrombin as well as prevent conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin by inhibiting this cycle okay now the next important uh, anticoagulant is antithrombin 3 now this is present in plasma as well as the vascular endothelium and the mechanism of action is that it inactivates many coagulation factors see in our intrinsic pathway we've seen that factor 12 gets activated 12a 11 to 11a 9 to 9a and 10 to 10a right the antithrombin 3 will inactivate all these coagulation factors. So what will happen? Coagulation will not take place. So this is how antithrombin 3 will help in anticoagulation. And remember we also said that antithrombin 3 works alongside heparin. Right? Now the third natural anticoagulant present is protein C. And what does protein C do? It is Protein C is basically synthesized in the liver and the mechanism of action is the activated protein C will inactivate factor 5 and factor 7. See, remember all our intrinsic pa coagulation pathway factors were inhibited by antithrombin 3. Now see here, this protein C will inactivate factor 5 and 7 and it also inactivates inhibition of inhibitor of tissue plasminogen activator. See, what tissue plasminogen activator is will, uh, will be explained in the fibrinolytic system. But anyway, this is a very crucial step in activating the plasmin which breaks down fibrin. So the two main factors are it inactivates factor 5 and factor 7 and inactivates the inhibitor of tissue plasminogen activator. So these are the factors that prevent coagulation. The natural anticoagulants, the three of them, heparin, antithrombin 3 and protein C. Now the third, so what are the factors or what is the role of endothelium in preventing coagulation? So the first factor is the smoothness of uninjured endothelial cell. So that itself will prevent plated aggregation. Secondly, there is a layer of glycocalyx that repel the clotting factors. So this, base, this basically uh, repels, it's, it's sort of a negative charge, so it will repel 
all the proteins or the clotting factors that tend to accumulate near the vessel wall. Now, another factor is the endothelial cells produce PGI2 which is a prostaglandin which opposes plated aggregation. And also the endothelium also produces thrombomodulin. This thrombomodulin plays an important role in a fibrolytic system also. Okay. So, these are the factors by which the endothelium will prevent clotting inside the blood vessels. Right. So, in anti-clotting mechanisms, we have seen the factors preventing plated aggregation. Uh, we said about prostacyclin. Next, we saw about the factors preventing coagulation, wherein we saw the natural anticoagulants. Then we saw the role of endothelium, like the smoothness, the layer of glycocalyx, and how it produces PGI2 as well as thromomodulin. Next is the mechanism by which the any clots that are formed are broken down. So that is mainly the function of a fibrinolytic system. So we will see more about that. So the fibrinolytic system means basically fibrin is broken down into fibrin degradation products. And the major compound that converts fibrin or breaks down fibrin is plasmin or it is also called fibrinolysin. So how was this plasmin activated? So here we can see that we know thrombin is activated for any clotting process, right? As the thrombin is activated, another pathway is also simultaneously this anticoagulation pathway is also activated, right? See, the end, we said that the endothelium produces thrombomodulin. So, thrombin will uh, form, combines with thrombomodulin and along with protein S will activate protein C. And what is the role of protein C? We said before it inactivates the inhibitor of TPA. So, see this is a double negative, right? So, what will happen? The TPA will be active. What is TPA? This tissue plasminogen activator. Tissue plasminogen activator. So, in turn protein C is actually activating TPA. That is tissue plasminogen activator. This tissue plasminogen activator will then convert plasminogen to plasmin. See, not only tissue plasminogen activator, there is another person that is urokinase type plasminogen activator, that is UPA, that can also convert plasminogen to plasmin. And it is this plasmin that is going to convert fibrin to, fi fibrin, to fibrin degradation products, FDP. So, see, this is our fibrinolytic system. Thrombin with the help of thrombomodulin and protein S will activate protein C. Protein C will inactivate the inhibitor of TPA. So, TPA will be activated and this will convert plasminogen to plasmin. So, thus, we have seen the basics of fibrinolytic system. Now, in case fibrinolytic system as such is asked as a short note, you can also write some additional scoring points like the physiological role of fibrinolysis system the factors affecting the fibrinolytic system. Physiological role means how it helps in the lysis of menstrual clot, how it uh, may, may make sure that there, are, there is no clot formation inside the body and points like that. And you can also write the factors affecting the fibrinolytic system. Now, as I always say, always complete your answer with an applied aspect. So the applied aspect for this type of question is the TPA and urokinase are used for the treatment of acute myocardial infraction. See, we said that TPA and urokinase, they activate plasminogen to plasmin. And this plasmin in turn is going to uh, convert fibrin to fib uh, fibrin to fibrin degradation products. So, whenever there is a clot, we can use TPA and urokinase to break down that clot. Okay. So, in acute myocardial infraction, if it is caused by a thrombus, in order to break down its fibrin, we can use TPA and urokinase. So, this is an applied aspect of this question. So that's it. I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.